I would say that the biggest trend uh, today is that it's real. Agency teams are seriously looking into and asking the right questions on how to move towards an enterprise implementation of a DevSecOps practice. Um, what's driving this idea is continuous a ATO, um, authority to operate. Not having to stop moving forward every few months and wait for, an, uh, for a security assessment, but building governance and policy compliance into the process from day one. The trends we see in the government space are really not that different from what we see in the commercial space. IDC predicts that there's going to be more applications in the next four years than the prior 40 years. In addition to that, what they also predict is of those more applications in the next four years than the prior 40 years combined, is 40% of those already today are using data um, to drive machine learning and deep learning type predictions. As a result, um, IT and um, development teams um, have to really modernize to be able to meet the, uh, the demands of these new development environments. Honestly, just get started. Um, look where it's already being leveraged in your agency. We're seeing many different agencies already starting up these practices. They might be in small groups um, or they might be in enterprise. Um, see where it's being leveraged in your agency and if there's a way to bring it into your mission space. Uh, most agencies are looking for folks to be able to champion this type of thinking. And if they haven't already, take a task that you're working with and start to move in the direction. The State of DevOps report from Dora talks about four key metrics for measuring DevOps performance. Uh, the first one is um, deployment frequency. How often are you able to deploy your application? The second one is uh, lead time for changes. There's also um, metrics around time to restore services, right? This is all, a lot of what's driving things like containerized application, Kubernetes deployment is the deploy those applications as you turn those into microservices that uh, require less time to deploy or to restore than big monolithic applications. And then lastly is the change fail rate is how good is your quality? Um, those are key metrics um, that the State of DevOps report measures and they break um, people into low performers, medium performers, high performers. And as of 2018, they actually start talking about elite performers. And the, it is clear that the elite performers are getting dramatically better business outcomes than the low performers. And uh, people are starting to notice and adopt the similar practices. You know, there's always some resistance to there. There's the question of, you know, I know from my own pra uh, life and in, in being in, in different areas, you know, the, the, the statement saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, I think I think folks need to start thinking about this like, well, you know what? How can I make this better? You know, how can I be more efficient? You know, the DevSecOps or, or however you want to term it, move the needle in that direction more quickly than in any other way. There's a business imperative today to be able to move business faster, to move, um, react to security problems faster. And it turns out unintuitively as teams have found that they have sped up their continuous integration and continuous deployment initiatives that it's actually driven innovation, it's improved product quality, and it meets the mission needs significantly better. But it does require moving from waterfall development process to more scrum-based, smaller team, microservices-based type applications. DevOps really thrives on the concept of a digital twin. Uh, it's the, the idea is the concept is to duplicate conditions of technologies in order to optimize the usage in a design. You need to create dev and test environments that are as close to the production environment as possible. And the closer they model the production environment, the better job you can do testing and the fewer test escapes you have. There's been quite a few success stories out there. One of the biggest ones, I guess, one of the ones that's getting the most press out there has been the work that uh, Nick Shalane and the Agile Air Force stuff has, has done with uh, Kessel Run. But those software code factories are popping up all over uh, within the Department of Defense. NetApp is working very closely with various agencies um, of the government, in particularly around um, some of the DOD teams 
that are looking at edge devices, looking at their military deployment, mobile edge devices, and being able to containerize those applications for fast deployment. Those agencies are taking advantage of our Trident plugin to Kubernetes, which enables persistent volume um, claims to be made by applications. Thundercat always takes a consultative approach with our clients. Um, we work to, with our partners like NetApp, NetApp, who's been a key partner of ours over the, over the 12 years that we've been in business, uh, bringing the best technologies into federal agencies. We try to look at the outcomes that are trying to be achieved by the agencies. We try to look at the entire architecture before making a suggestion and, and working within the strategic initiatives that are, that are already present out there to make sure things are getting done correctly. I also want to mention what's also really critical in, in this day and age is um, data governance and data security. As more and more data becomes available, the need to keep that data secure, provide levels of access where it's needed, but restricted where it's not needed. The data mobility brings other uh, particular challenges. And um, that's really where NetApp is really trying to focus a lot of our efforts is being able to modernize data for these modern applications, but also to provide the data governance, the backup to that disaster recovery so that the data stays secure. I saw this quote just 10 minutes before we started here, and I was, I was like, this is absolutely perfect. Uh, it's from uh, Ed Catmull, uh, who was one of the founders of Pixar, uh, saying, the desire for everything to run smoothly is a false goal. It leads to measuring people by their mistakes rather than by their ability to solve problems. So, you know, get moving on it. Yes, it'll be a, it'll be a bit messy. You have to deal with these cultural issues. You have to work on as you said before, people, process, and, and technology, and make sure they're all working together. The best way to get started is to put a small initiative in place. Um, send those teams to the, the uh, DevOps conferences, and then figure out what the key metrics are. Figure out where you're at today. Try to decide, are you a low performer, medium, or high performer? And then set, set some goals incrementally to move towards elite.